Hey everyone! So I know I say this just about at the beginning of every video, but today we're talking about one of my favorite things, yet another one of my favorite things, and that is ear piercings. As some of you may know, I already did a video where I talked about my Majuri and my Masoma jewelry, and you can give that a look right up here. But I wanted to go a little more in depth about my specific piercings, um, some tips I have, where I got them, the healing process, the pain level, so stay tuned if you're interested to hear about those. All right, so I'm just gonna go in the order of getting my piercings. So I got my lobes pierced when I was little. I don't even know how old I was. Um, probably at a Claire's, like who even knows? And I, they were pierced completely uneven. I used to, this is not an exaggeration or a hyperbole, I used to wear earrings that had marbles on the end. And they were my favorite earrings and I would trade out the marbles, like I would get cool new holographic shiny marbles and put those in. And eventually, from wearing such heavy earrings all the time, my ear literally split. And I know some people are looking for that look, but it looked like a snake tongue. It wasn't like bloody or anything because it was such a gradual thing, so I just had a forked tongue and literally had to have the only plastic surgery I've gotten on my ear to stitch it back up and had to get it repierced. So now that that's out of the way, my next piercing I got was my second lobe hole in this ear, my right ear. And I learned my lesson. I realized that guns are no good. <laughs> so I went to uh, an actual piercer here in West Palm where I live. His name's Shorty. And he has a great selection of jewelry. And I got that one pierced by him. And I actually had this moon in it that's now in my other cartilage. And lobes are notoriously pretty easy to heal i think they swell up a little bit more at first and i think the pain is a little bit more of a pinch just because it's a fleshier area it's less pressure and more of a pinch but even though that initial healing can be a lot of swelling and redness it heals the fastest i would say your lobe piercing will be completely healed definitely within three months so much faster than most cartilage piercings heal. And again, I'm not an expert on this. I don't have a license in piercing. I just like being a pierce. So obviously I don't actually know what I'm talking about, but I'm just here to give my tips, my advice. So that leads me to one of my next points is that when you're looking for a piercer, you should look for someone that's AAP certified, which means that they have a license for piercing. That means they're gonna be sanitary, safe, and use the best practices on your ears, which a lot of times means they're not going to pierce you with a ring because that's harder to heal because it spins around and can cause an infection and make it take longer to heal. So definitely do your research before you go get pierced. I know it seems like nothing, but don't go to Claire's and get a gun piercing. Do your research. So my third piercing was, no, my third and my, oh my gosh spacing out now no okay my third piercing I got in New York it's this little star I've never taken it out and I got that one at Maria Tosh I've heard some people call it Mariah Tosh I don't know M-A-R-I-A-T-A-S-H they have really gorgeous jewelry it's definitely on the expensive side because they use real gold real diamonds and they know they can charge that much but I do like getting pierced there it's walk-ins only no appointments and I've gotten pierced there a few times. So that was my, th at this point, I then had three on my lobe, one on this lobe. So I needed to even it out a little more. So I, my next ones I got at another tattoo shop here with just cheaper jewelry. I kind of regret this one just because I love really nice jewelry and I just got pierced with um, titanium that was changed to be the color of a goldish color, but I hated the way it looked. I messed with them all the time. I had a bar in my cartilage that was way too long, and I just don't recommend doing that because I still have problems with this cartilage. It's this one right here on my left ear. And uh, for some reason, this was just giving me the most trouble, and I think it's because that initial piercing I had was such a long bar. It looked like something you would put through like your belly button or something. It was like this long of a bar. Um, I also at that time got my Daith done, which a lot of people ask me about this one because it's kind of inside my ear. And while this one was a little bit painful, the putting in the earring process, the actual piercing itself definitely just felt like pressure. It only started to hurt because of the angle and how hard it is to get the actual hoop in once they pierce it. So 
I would say these were pretty comparable on pain though. All of the cartilage ones that I have, I would say pain wise, they all felt very similar. Pressure, but a quick little pain. And the most pain I felt is when they're trying to get the earring in, if it's one that's at a different, difficult angle and they're having trouble getting it in right. And I've even had super experienced piercers, you know, AAP certified ones have that same issue. It's just a matter of it's they're using this little tiny piece of jewelry and at a strange angle trying to get it into your ear. So after I got those two, those were my first cartilage ones, and I definitely wanted to make sure those were all, you know, healed, and it says that it takes about six months to a year or even longer for cartilage piercings to fully heal, so I don't recommend messing with them or changing out the jewelry until that time. That's another reason I say pierce your ears with jewelry that you like. Uh, a tip I like to use is if I'm in a city, and because I kind of like doing it like when I'm in another city, is I research what shops carry the type of jewelry I like. And usually the ones who carry the high-end jewelry, like BBLA, Body Gems, Maria Tosh, they tend to have experienced licensed piercers who work there, and they're definitely not gonna be piercing you with a gun. So, and a lot of times it's actually just, like a Maria Tosh is just a piercing shop, they don't do tattoos. And I'm seeing that there's more of those cropping up lately that aren't a tattoo and piercing shop, it's just a piercer. So definitely search for, you know, BBLA. Um, they have a store locator on their site and it'll tell you what piercers use their products And I think that's a really great way to make sure that you're gonna get beautiful jewelry to start out with But again, it is pricey. I would say even if I get kind of like a basic one it can cost at least a hundred dollars um, Maria Tosh usually 150 and I'm getting kind of their cheaper stuff by the time you add in tip uh, the price of the jewelry and tax and the piercing cost itself and definitely tip your piercers um you know, whatever, I, I usually do like 20% of the cost of the piercing service itself, um, or a little more, depending, I've also done it based on the whole cost of the jewelry, so when I really like someone, I pierced, I, I did 20% of like 120. Um, so it just sort of depends on, you know, the time they spent with you, and but definitely, definitely tip them. Um, moving on to my next one, would be this my my conch piercing which i always want to call conch because it's spelled like that and this one i got done at 108 brooklyn which is j colby smith's shop um he's a pretty famous piercer but i got it done by josh harris who was awesome he's actually from florida like me um oh and i'm sorry my maria tosh when my first one was from ben tower who's also awesome and this one healed not bad actually um I had one time I got a little blister on it, but other than that, pretty smooth sailing. And that time I got blisters because I was getting my hair done, and when she was washing my hair, she kept hitting it. So that's another tip I have. If you go and get your hair done or something where they're messing around your ear area, just let them be aware of it, be aware of it so that they don't, you know, whack around there too hard. Uh, my next one was this little heart, which again I got from Maria Tosh in New York, and I love it. It's so cute. It's they call this the Tosh Rook there, but a lot of places will call this your flat, um, the flat of your ear, this whole kind of area right here. And again, comparable to my other cartilage piercings, healed pretty well, but I do have to say the ones that are encapsulated in my ear, like my date and the one I'm about to show you, definitely heal faster than the ones where your hair is rubbing in the back, you know, you have a likely chance of your clothing catching on it. So that brings me to my next one, which is my Ford Helix, which I got done in DC, because I literally treat piercings like souvenirs. I like to have, to have them as like little memories of my trip, or like get them with my friends or my sister. And um, so I got this one with my very good friends in DC, and it's just like a little cubic zirconia. This one wasn't super expensive. I think in total it cost 75. Um, ow, sorry. Is it a movie of mine if he's not biting me in it? Um, so yeah, this one healed really easy. And, and to this day, I get little, like not to be gross, but like little crusties around them. And that's just the, that's just evidence of them healing. It's not pus. It's like, I think it's actually just like, uh, is blood plasma the right word? I don't know. It's something that excretes that it's aiding in the healing process, but it's not pus. It's not infected. They don't hurt anymore. Um, and I forgot to mention, but over the, I think I started getting my very, my second lobe piercing, I got about... A little over two years ago so in that course of time I've gotten all of these piercings and I spaced them out so that I am a side sleeper so I never like having two healing at one time um, 
even though some of them really are still healing, but I just like to have one ear that's more done. That's why I still have kind of like some space I like to fill in over here because I still feel like I'm healing this ear. So yeah, um, I hope that answers a lot of questions you have about piercings. I know when I first started getting them done, I was doing so much research online. And I guess I should also add that I'm like a total pain when it, or I'm a total baby when it comes to pain. And I feel like the piercing process itself is so not bad. It's so quick. Like think about any pain you could have. If it's just one second of pain, it's so not bad. And it's really, it's not, the pain's not even that bad. Like if you watch videos, most of the time people don't even flinch. I've never cried getting one. I've let out like a little like eh, like one time when they were putting in my date. But on, other than that, I'm usually like smiling the whole time and so excited about getting my piercing done. Um, it's so much faster than even, I have some, two little small tattoos, which they don't hurt that bad either, but that's a longer process. With piercing, I would say the most painful part is the healing process. You'll have a little bit of soreness afterwards. I like to take Advil the next couple days just to help with the little bit of soreness you might feel. Um, I don't think they recommend taking it before because it can thin out your blood and make you bleed a little bit more. But yeah, taking it after is not a problem. And as far as cleaning them goes, I use um, either just a salt compress, or, or I'm sorry, a salt spray that I'll put like on a pad and just hold it on there or just spray it occasionally to just get rid of all of all the dust. And then occasionally I'll use an antimicrobial soap that I'll show you. Um, Oh, actually, I think I might be all out of mine, but I'll insert a picture of it that I use and you just swoosh it, swoosh it, wash it off. But again, you don't want to be doing that too much because you want to be touching them as least as possible. So I think the salt spray is the best just to get all the dust off and then like once a week kind of wash them with the antimicrobial and you shouldn't have too many problems. But if you have any other questions you'd like me to answer, let me know. Bye.